Sometimes a DNF can tell you more about yourself as a runner than a finish because it forces us to be more introspective, look more closely at why we failed, why we didn't complete and what we can do better next time. I'm fortunate enough to have completed 69 of the 76 ultra distance races that I've entered and that works out at a completion rate of just under 91 percent. Now of those seven DNFs, four of them were arguably completely avoidable because they were born out of complacency, underpreparedness and the thought that I've done this before, I can do it again, it's no problem. I've done 100k, I've run in the hot weather, I can easily finish this, I won't need to do any specific extra training. And that's exactly how I approach the Swiss Alps 100. It's only 100k, it's not 100 miles. I totally believed that the races I'd done leading up to this would be specific enough training to get me through the Swiss Alps 100. So in May, I completed the Cape Wrath Ultra, 380 kilometers of rough Scottish terrain. Then in June, I completed the South Downs Way 100, 100 miles with a not insignificant amount of elevation gain, 3,500 meters and 24 hours time on feet. Finally, in July, I ran Race to the Stones, 100 kilometers. Now, yes, very easy terrain, lovely to run on, but again, good 13 hours time on feet, good stamina and endurance training over 100 kilometers. I was pretty sure this would see me through the Swiss Alps 100K. I wasn't worried and the thought of not finishing hadn't even crossed my mind. That said, as race day drew closer, the weather forecasts did start to say it was going to be pretty hot on race day. And that was a concern for me. However, last year I finished UTMB, the full 100 mile race in blistering heat. And the year before that, I finished TDS and it was really hot at TDS as well. And that's way more than 100K with loads more elevation. I'm gonna be fine. We started at 6.30 a.m which was great because it meant we had cool temperatures on the first 10 kilometers out of fish and up to Eggishorn at the top of the first climb, 2000 meters above sea level. Then we traversed the side of the mountain and uh, ran along the Alatesh Glacier, which was absolutely amazing and in the shade for another five kilometers. So all was going really well. I think it's pronounced Alesh, Alesh Glacier or Alat Alatesh Glacier. Not entirely sure, but probably a Lesh Glacier. At around 15 kilometers in, we turned right inland and into the full glare of the sun by the second aid station. We ran down through some absolutely stunning scenery towards the Aspi Tita suspension bridge. Now you may well know I don't get along with gels, but I have been trying these protein rebel gels which were made of maple syrup and absolutely lovely. And they sat fairly well on my stomach. So I seem to be having no problems early on with nutrition, <laughs> early on. Remember, this is a 100 kilometer race. By 15 kilometers, we were in the glare of the sun at 10 a.m. And once we'd crossed the Aspitita suspension bridge, there was a steep climb. It was very, very hot. And I started to slow from that point on. And even by 20 kilometers in, my stomach started to turn. I was stopping at every stream, every waterfall, chucking water all over myself, on my legs, on my arms, on my hair, dipping my cap in the water, just to bring down my core temperature to no avail. And then it got to the point that I just couldn't even face drinking water, let alone anything else. One thing that does sometimes settle my stomach is milk or milk products. And I think about 35 K and we went through a village called Rakingen where there was a shop. So I stopped, I looked for some plain milk, couldn't find any. So I bought some chocolate milk, which I thought would give me a bit of energy and also settle my stomach. However, it wasn't long before I started throwing up. 
I stopped in a tiny little village and I threw up all over this poor bloke's garden. He was very nice about it. But interestingly, what came up was not the gels and not the Red Bull that I'd been drinking, but the chocolate milk. I pushed on in the blistering heat. There was not a cloud in the sky. And I finally made it to Blitzingen at 45 kilometers where the drop bags were. And I sat down on the grass and I considered stopping there and then. But with some encouragement from the volunteers and the knowledge that it wouldn't be too long before the sun went down, I decided to crack on. So I got up and made my way up the next climb. By the way, if you are finding this video useful, interesting, if it's helping you in your planning for your next race or thoughts about doing a 100K or running in the hot weather, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free, really helps me out. I'd really appreciate it. And share this video with your friends. Uh, they might want to hear about how I DNF'd the Swiss Alps 100 as well. By now, I was moving ridiculously slowly and I thought there was a very good chance that I would miss the cutoff at the next checkpoint. But to be honest, I was quite pleased about that. Okay, this is last chance saloon now. I have one hour to do 3.6K. See, it would mean the decision was taken out of my hands. I would be told to stop. I wouldn't have to make the decision for myself. Eventually, I sat down on the side of the trail. I knew I was done. I wasn't gonna make the cutoff. I was moving too slowly, I was too hot, I was too tired. But then, as I was sat there contemplating my life, another runner came up the trail and said, you know they've extended the cutoff. Oh. She said, we can easily make it to the checkpoint now. They've extended the cutoff by an hour and a half. We're gonna make it. If I'm honest, my heart sank because I knew I had to carry on. I got up and I made it to the next checkpoint halfway up the climb at Chassestat with 45 minutes left before cutoff. But you know what? I just didn't have it in me to carry on. You see, the thing is that when I sat down on that trail, I knew I wasn't gonna make the cutoff and I was done, I was out. And I simply didn't have the will, the desire, the motivation to get myself up again and start moving again. I gave up and I gave in. Even though I knew that the sun would be going down soon, even though I knew I just had to move for another hour or so up the hill, I didn't have the motivation. I took my pack off, I lay down on the grass, and I was out. It reminded me a lot of my DNF at TDS in 2019. I was undertrained, underprepared, I was climbing hills, feeling so out of breath, so hot and so demoralised, that eventually, I just lay down on the grass and fell asleep at the side of the trail. So the reason for my DNF at the Swiss Alps 100K is very simple. Under preparedness for the task in hand. I wasn't ready for the job I had to do. I hadn't trained enough. My VO2 max was not high enough to pump the amount of oxygen into my muscles that I needed. My legs were simply not strong enough to cope with the climbs. The climbs were 1,200 metres. Those are some of the longest climbs I've ever done. And I just wasn't ready. Yes, I can go on about how hot it was. I can go on about the fact that, you know, we've had some personal family issues to deal with, which might have been playing on my mind. We might say that the races that I had leading up to the Swiss Alps 100 contributed to fatigue rather than a positive benefit of training. And all of those things may be relevant to some degree, but the bottom line is I was underprepared. I was complacent and it's my own fault and I've got nobody else to blame but myself. Very well done to Ben and Carla from Time on Feet and to Jeff Pelletier from Jeff Pelletier. <laughs> for completing their races at the Swiss Alps 100. And a massive thank you to Jakob, the race director of the Swiss Alps 100, for inviting me to come and do the race and very kindly inviting me back next year to complete the job. Because that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back next year 
I am going to finish the Swiss Alps 100k and I would recommend anybody to come and run in the stunning location around Fiche. So if you get the chance, get yourself out to Switzerland, come and run the Swiss Alps 100. Don't get it confused with the Swiss Peaks 100, different race. You will absolutely be blown away by the scenery. If you've enjoyed watching this video, if you found it inspirational, entertaining, depressing, demoralizing, or in any way useful, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. That is my story of the Swiss Alps 100. There will be a race video coming soon. Take care and I'll see you on the start line next time. Bye-bye.